some don't think that tidal power is as green as it's being made out to be. We want to talk more about that tonight with our regular science analyst, Michael Novacek. He's the provost of science at the American Museum of Natural History right here in New York. Michael, good to see you again. Nice to be here. Looking at that report from South mm -hmm. Korea, it seems positive, but it is also seen by some as being environmentally controversial. Talk a little bit about that in some more detail Absolutely. for us. Absolutely. This is a big project, uh, and it involves the construction of a massive structure made of concrete and steel, like a giant dam. It's called a barrage, and a barrage has these turbines built into it, and the turbines are powered by the movement of water due to the changes or the shifts in the tide. But unfortunately, like dams, they also come with a lot of negative impacts. For example, fish, the migration of fish that's very important to the environment is impeded by these big barrages. Fish are even killed trying to cross these barriers. Uh, also, the salinity changes. The barrage blocks the lagoon and lowers the salinity in the backwater, and that changes the environment, and organisms are ill-adapted to those changes. Does the technology exist to reduce some of these types of environmental impacts that you've been describing? There are some intriguing technologies technologies that uh, work on getting power from the movement of water. Uh, one of these is called the stream technology, and this is, uh, this is really essentially having turbines under the surface of the water, and the movement of that water powers, uh, you, you get your energy from that. And how sophisticated is that technology? Well, this is really in the early stages of experimenting, and, and it's not being used for any commercial purposes currently, although there, there is a big project in Wales that is uh, slotted for completion by 2010 that actually, in a sense, is a windmill farm under the sea, or more correctly, a turbine farm under the sea. Mm. So let's rewind just a little bit um, and address this dilemma. I mean. What's worse, really? I mean, looking at the environmental impact on the local environment or dealing with trying to reduce these harmful greenhouse gases which affect the entire planet. How do we get around this conundrum? Well, this is the essential dilemma, isn't it? I mean, you have an environmental, local environmental problem on one hand. It could be a big regional one. But after all, a thing like a, uh, like a barrage is important for preventing the emission of a lot of CO2 and other greenhouse gases. So that is an important consideration. Yet there are some environmentalists who claim we can get a twofer. We can still uh, reduce our CO2 emissions but use a more distributed, smaller scale approach to, to alternative ener energy sources like water or wind or solar. And on a large scale, how far away, how many years away are we from trying to sort of mass harness this new technology? Oh, I think it's some years away. I mean, it's probably we're looking at a half a decade to a decade to, before we see real gains forward, where an appreciable amount of energy in any given country is going to come from that. All right, Michael Novacek, thank you very much. It's great to be here again.